And it was the type of clothes that, you know, at the end of the day where you just like, bleh. my husband saw me in this. He'd want to sh like completely take it off of me and throw me into the bed. It just shows how sinful our flesh is and how our flesh just wants to do what it wants to do. Like, and everything that we should do should be for the glory of the Lord. And so that is even as simple as what you're wearing. I, um, got rid of 90% of my clothes and here's why hey guys welcome back to my channel welcome to today's video i know you may be probably tired of me in my wardrobe because i have been in this dilemma i'm 26 years old i'm actually about to turn 27 in a couple of months and it took me this long to find my style find what i like to wear what feels like me and in order to get to this place it has taken several years i have had to go through so many different trials i have been trying to minimize my wardrobe for two years at this point maybe a little less than two years but it has been a process for me and it's something that I didn't realize I was in bondage to it wasn't something that I realized had such a stronghold on me until that bondage was broken and so I kind of wanted to walk that through today I wanted to ask you some questions that I had to ask myself that really helped me pull this out of me and expose how I was viewing clothes and I want to show you how I view clothes now and how different that looks and how much more glorifying that is to the Lord versus myself because I was dressing in a way that glorified my body versus glorifying the Lord and that is just not how I wanted to be dressing anymore that wasn't a way that respected my husband it wasn't a way that honored the Lord it wasn't it wasn't doing much for anyone Okay, so it's been a couple days now, but I just woke up one day My sister had just came back home from school and she was spending the night with us and she has really helped Ask me these questions in a provoking way not in a way that is her telling me what to do Not in a way that feels condemning but convicting and I think there's a huge difference between the two But she's helped really pry these things out of me and had me really question why I was wearing clothes the way that I was It just has really helped me. Earlier this year, I made more of an effort to dress more modest. Now, I only use that word because I know some women tend to want to dress modestly as well, and so they will look for modest specific clothing. And so that's the only reason why I use that word. When I use the word modest, I know a lot of people instantly shut down, and I was right there with you. For so many years, I was against this, and I've already did a I did a video on this when I had that whole conviction, so I will link that down below because I definitely break down a lot of that, but this is is more just like an application and me actually showing you what that has looked like so when I decided I was going to start dressing more modestly I really had to take a look through my closet and just kind of reevaluate the stuff that I had and what I was wearing and so I had done that months back but then there were still some pieces that I was holding on to because I was like I don't really know how I'll feel about this like I don't know if it feels modest now and there are some pieces in there that I have just had to donate because they just really did not feel modest and so for me those were shorter dresses anything above of the knee I have kids I'm bending down a lot I'm moving a lot and with those types of dresses if it doesn't look modest when you're moving then to me I just can't do it so really dresses below the knee to me I feel like is a guarantee that like my butt crack ain't gonna be showing when I go to pick up my kid or if I do pick up my kid and they accidentally bring my dress up with me that's okay because I still have a whole lot of fabric underneath like it's a little bit easier so for me I had to eliminate those some crop tops but with the crop tops has been a little bit tricky because I have bought some back because crop tops look really nice with skirts and I always tuck in and put like a tank top underneath. The weight and the balance looks really well because sometimes if you wear a skirt with a large T, you kind of look like a potato sack and I wasn't really going for the potato sack look, you know? You can still dress modest and have shape and structure and feel feminine. And so I think for me, it took me a minute. It took me a minute to figure out what I feel felt comfortable in and what I didn't feel comfortable with and I'm still working through that that's why I call it a modesty journey because I feel like it is a journey there were things in the beginning of my journey that I felt more comfortable with but when I went to go look through my closet a couple of days ago and I tried stuff off so I was like no I just this feels too sexy to me this feels convicting my husband saw me in this he'd want to sh like completely take it off of me and throw me into the bed that is not sending the right signal to other people and so I've really had to kind of go through that so 
Anyway, one of the questions my sister asked me is, why do you like that? And I thought that was is so interesting because oftentimes we like a piece of clothing because it makes us look nice. And this is going to be really hard to say out loud. And it really showed where my heart was. And I really had to repent and just ask the Lord for forgiveness because I didn't realize where my heart was. And it's so devastating because it just shows how sinful our flesh is and how our flesh just wants to do what it wants to do. Like naturally we don't think about these things. And I had been dressing like this my entire life. It is a cultural thing. Like it is something that is so ingrained in us at such a young age, like since high school, like I have been wearing tight, tight clothes since I was in middle school. Like it has been something that's been so ingrained in my life that I had never thought else or thought different. I had never been taught different. I had never been convicted differently until recently. And so I just want to share this because ask yourself, why do you like that piece of clothing? So for me, my response for most of them, which again, I'm it's going to be hard for me to say out loud, but I liked a piece of clothing because it made my body look nice. And that is not why we should be wearing clothing. That is not a good reason because my body is not mine and my body is not meant for the whole world to see and to air it out for everyone to see. My body is a temple. My body belongs to my husband and to Christ. And so if I like the way something looks or if I'm wearing something just because I like the way it looks on my body, then everything that I wear is going to be extremely distorted and my view of clothes is going to be distorted. And this is where I think the bondage broke off. I should probably open Open this because this is my closet. My dog's on the ground over there, but should have opened this from the start so we can take a peeker at her, huh? There she is. She's a beauty, huh? This side is my side. That is my husband's side. I'm actually not going to be walking through all the pieces that I've kept and what my like current wardrobe setup looks like because I'm still working on it. So I did eliminate 90% of my stuff and it felt so amazing to do that. It felt so great. This is every single thing that I own right here. What was really hard for me is I always use the idea of living in Michigan where we have all four seasons as an excuse to have an abundance of clothes. And I would actually swap out out my clothes and my closet. So like I had a summer wardrobe that I would keep in there in the summertime and then it would get too full for me to include my winter clothes. So I'd have to put all of the other stuff in bins and then bring out the winter stuff. I'm not doing that anymore. This is my winter, summer, spring, fall, everything, which is a huge step for me. Now I'm not claiming to be a minimal in this area. I definitely can do a lot more, but it's baby steps. It's baby steps. Like this is so much more less than what I had a year or so ago. Um, the fact that I don't have to have bins for winter versus summer stuff is already huge. The fact that I can fit my entire wardrobe just in this half of the closet is a really big step for me. And so I want to encourage you in that because oftentimes it's so hard as an influencer to want to share about these things because people are just so nasty and people think you need to have four pieces of clothing to be minimal. And that's just like not it for me. And so I know that there are some people who are very, very minimal with their clothing and I aspire to be that and I'm working towards that. It's just not going to happen overnight for me. I really have to figure out exactly what it is. So anyway, when I was cleaning things out, I was going through and asking myself the question, why do I like this? If it's because I like the way that it looks on my body and makes my body feel, then that is just not an appropriate answer to that question because then I'm not using clothes to glorify the Lord. I'm using it to glorify me and my body. And everything that we should do should be for the glory of the Lord. And so that is even as simple as what you're wearing. As I was going through this, I was simply asking myself that question, but because I had already done that and kind of a really eliminated the ones that were really obvious that were immodest, this time around, I really had to sit there and think when I put this on, what do I represent when I put this on? Am I going to cause another brother to stumble? And I know that is one thing that can piss off women. Like the idea of what I wear discouraging someone else and me having to worry about what another man is looking at pisses people off. And I get that. I totally get that. You need to, your people need to be responsible for themselves. They totally do. But you need to be responsible for yourself too. If you're going to be going to church with your entire bust showing, that is just straight up disrespectful. 
respectful. We never know what a brother struggles with. And it wasn't until I heard other brothers talk about this. It wasn't until I heard other brothers talk about how they had to stop going to church because every time they went, they were being tempted and they couldn't find a safe place because everywhere they were going, they were being tempted by the way that women were dressing. And it's so, it was very, very eye-opening. And so I just want to bring that to your mind because dressing, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we could go down a whole rabbit hole of dressing and why we wear clothes, what the purpose of clothes, like we could go through a whole rabbit hole, but that's just something I was trying to be mindful too. And just my husband, I have a whole bucket up there y'all, a whole bin of just lingerie. Don't mistake me dressing modestly for you as me dressing modestly for my husband. That has been a huge thing in my modesty journey that I've really found has been intriguing is how much our sex life has improved and how that was affected in a very positive light. And so just because you're a wife and you dress modestly for the world does not mean you have to be modest in the bed and modest with your husband. You can have the most revealing sexy pieces of clothes up there, but I keep those up there for my husband and my husband's eyes. And so so it's been really beautiful to be able to do that and know that my body truly does belong to him and honoring him and who I let see that. Anyway, another thing that I was thinking about when going through all the pieces was material and longevity of clothes and then style. I've really tried recently to dress more feminine. This is something I've really struggled with. And even in my summer capsule wardrobe video though that I did a couple of months ago, there were pieces in there that I still like don't really feel like are really feminine. And I've always gravitated towards a more streetwear style that is more of a male relaxed fit. And something my sister always says is that if a man can wear that, you don't need to be wearing that. And it's so true. Like I used to love the oversized blazers. I used to love like the more button down style fits, but truly I don't feel as beautiful and feminine in those. And my husband prefers feminine clothes. So again, who are you dressing for? I married my husband and I want him to look at me like I'm the most beautiful girl in the world. And so if there's a specific style or specific thing that he likes, I'm going to wear that because I want my husband to like what I wear. I'm not going to rebel against him and be like, no, I'm gonna wear it. He, my husband hates mom jeans. He hates them. Like every time I wore them, he was just like, I don't get it. And now I get it. I get why he doesn't like them. And I get why he prefers flowy, beautiful dresses instead. Like I get it. So ask your husband, what does he like what you wear? And of course, there's a difference between what he likes for you to wear in the bedroom versus outside. So make a distinguish between the two and separate them. Ask him, what do you like? You like when I wear red? You like when I wear flowers? You like when I wear this? And if your husband likes when you wear lustful clothes outside of the home, then we have a heart issue here. And I feel like that could be a whole talk about submission, which I've been doing a series on my channel as well. So I'll link my two submission videos down below. Another thing I was looking for was material. And this is something that has been slow coming for me. But when my friend Nava was in town, she really educated me on the importance of materials. And I was very naive to this, very. I never realized that polyester was plastic. If you know this information, is anyone else just completely mind blown that this is like common? Like, I feel like the older I get, the more I'm like, why are things the way that they are? How do we get away with all of this? Like, it's insane. So fabrics was something that I've been trying to be more mindful of. Cottons, linens, wools, cashmere. That's about it. So when I was going through, there are several dresses that I had to eliminate because they were polyester. Now that I've been wearing mostly linen and cotton stuff, when I wear the polyester, I want to rip it off. It's crazy. And I smell, I smell when I wear the polyester. Like I had this one dress that was so cute, so cute, mock neck, long sleeves here. It was a perfect length. It was like white with like florals on it. It was adorable that I got on Amazon, but it was 100% polyester. Boy, was she itchy and boy, did I stink when I was wearing her. And it was the type of clothes that, you know, at the end of the day where you just like, Bleh. You just wanna take your clothes off, you're just like done. That would happen every time I wore that, but that doesn't happen when I wear this, which is 100% cotton. So that was another thing I was being mindful of is the fabrics. And so I still want to go through and eliminate. I currently have 40 dresses, which I think is a little excessive. So I still want to go through and find comb. I have several creams. So I wanna go through my cream colors and ask myself, what do I like about this? Do I have another one that's too similar to this? But again, it happens in stages. It 
happens and it's a little bit of a journey and so let's ask ourselves a couple more questions why do you like when you wear that when you wear that how do you feel there were definitely clothes that I would put on that I would feel quote-unquote sexy or I would feel more like I don't want to use the word lustful but I remember putting it on and being like mm -hmm, I don't know and yes, it was for my husband, but when I would go out in public, it would be for people other than my husband. And so I had to really ask myself that question. One thing I actually have not gone through are my workout clothes, because that's an area that I've been, one, I don't work out. I'm currently in my cast iron and whole baby era for working out, so I've been struggling to work out. I was trying to get and do at-home Pilates, and I did it for like a couple days, but then I just didn't like the program. So I'm still looking for a program. If you have a good Pilates program, let me know down below. But with this, I've been kind of, mm, because leggings, and I used to wear just leggings and a sports bra. I definitely don't do that anymore, but I do have these tops that are like this, that are more like muscle tees that I will wear over my sports bras, but then I have been tying a sweatshirt around my waist to kind of cover the booty batoos. And that has felt okay, but I still have an excessive amount of workout clothes, especially for one who doesn't work out. So I do have to go through this. And I'm still, jeans are something I have not worn in a very long time. I'm still holding on to my jeans. I went through them. I don't have any jeans with holes anymore or any rips, but the jeans that I do have, I have not reached for and worn in a while. So again, a lot of stuff I kind of put on hold. I told them that they were in a little hold situation and I would call them back once I decided if I was gonna keep them or not and so the jeans are currently on hold for me and some of my skirts and the patterns that I have for those and yeah I'm gonna go through again and just kind of fine-tune and fine comb so ask yourself the question why do you wear this how do you feel when you wear it and what kind of reaction do you get from people I learned this from another youtuber who when she started dressing modestly she said women were a lot nicer to her and I thought that was crazy because women aren't really intimidated by you when you are covered like there's nothing to look at that's the beauty is that I want people to stop looking at what I'm wearing and just look at the smile on my face so I can tell them about Jesus and so when you have that perspective I feel like women just are intimidated by you and women are so much kinder to you and this is the truest thing it is so true and I think it goes beyond just wearing dresses you don't have to wear dresses for women to be kind to you but I think just having a more feminine look and just being more covered and not having so much sin exposed because women love to compare to each other and so so I have found that I have not found myself in the comparison trap in a long time because I am just not worried about it. I'm just not thinking about it. I'm not wearing clothes because I want my body to look nice. I'm wearing clothes because I want it to glorify the Lord. And so it's a complete change. Like I'm no longer bounded by my clothes. Like I don't think we realize how much bondage we have to things and to clothes and toys and phones. And it is so eye-opening so peace out bondage to clothes no more my friend another thing that I've been doing since all of this is when I go to purchase something so I'm trying to be very selective about any purchases moving forward if something is coming in something has to go out especially after I fine-tuned this what I will be doing is taking a screenshot of said item I'd like to purchase I shop online I don't do the whole in-store thing so this wouldn't really apply to you if you shop in store maybe it would maybe you can take a picture of it and then save it but for me I take a screenshot of said item so for example I had a white skirt that was a hundred percent polyester the itchiest thing it was beautiful but it was so itchy and it was already falling apart and I got it like two months ago so I did donate that but since then I have searched I have gone in my closet three times now and I'm like oh where's the white skirt oh I donated it oh I really liked the white skirt so that tells me I could replace it because I've been wanting to use it and so searched high and low I found one, but I didn't purchase it. I took a screenshot of it and I'm waiting for it to either go on sale or for me to really, like really make sure I really want it. So I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for three more instances where I go to look for the white skirt and I don't find it. And so, cause in my mind that tells me I need it and I liked it and used it. What I'm trying to eliminate is buying things that I'm not going to use and are just gonna sit here and not get touched. So ask yourself, what do you like to use on the daily? And you don't have to go and throw out everything that you're currently using. You can definitely make pieces that you currently have more modest. You don't underestimate the ability that a crop, a, a hang top 
app can do to a shirt that is more revealing. The only thing would be like shorts because shorts like what you're gonna do. You can't really make shorts any longer. So there's definitely a way around that. And thrifting, there's so many things that you can thrift. Do closet swaps. I did closet swaps with my friends before. That is really fun where you just swap clothes that you have. And then just be mindful about the purchases that you're going to make so you aren't buying things. Ask yourself the question, why do I want to buy this? What do I feel like when I'm buying it? Why do I like this piece? That alone will really help eliminate a lot of unnecessary purchases. So yeah, this has been uh, my little learning curve and what has happened the last couple of days and in the mornings when I go to get dressed, it was already pretty simple for me to get dressed because I really just went right there and just kind of picked out a dress. But now it's been even more so and I've been really excited to see the pieces that I do have and want to use those more. So yeah, if you're interested in what my collection currently looks like, I'll do that in a couple, maybe in a year or so, once I really fine tune it more, once I really figure out the staple pieces and eliminate more, stuff I don't feel a hundred percent but I'm also not going to just throw everything away and get a whole new wardrobe that's not sustainable that's not realistic that's not necessary so it's going to take me several years to get to the point where I feel like I'm comfortable and let's not forget that I have been pregnant and breastfeeding for the last four years of my life as well and so my doctors don't want me getting pregnant for another year after having my miscarriage so I do have a little bit of a buffer time right now where I'm able to kind of play around with things and not really have to worry about that so yeah that's all Ask yourself those questions. I'm just here to help and to, you know, sprinkle a little conviction here, rearrange and see why we're doing what we're doing and how we can glorify the Lord some more. Love you. Be blessed.